New at 11, we are getting brand new details of the arrest of actor and comedian Tiffany Haddish in Peachtree City, charged with DUI. Police say they got a call about a driver asleep at the wheel on the road. An officer stopped Haddish's car, which matched the description from the caller pulling into a home. She was released from the Fayette County Jail after posting a $1,600 bond. Comedian Tiffany had his charge with a DUI in a town south of Atlanta, just outside the perimeter. About to get into that and dive a little deeper into what's going on with Tiffany. But first, take a second to make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. Click the notification bell and all for updates. If you're new, include new subscriber in your comment below. And I'm going to try my best to respond to all of you. Shout out to Fayette County, Georgia, Fayetteville, Peachtree City, Tyrone. If you're from that area, let us know below in the comments. Got an article here from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. The headline, Tiffany Haddish caught napping at will, charged with DUI in Peachtree City. Comedian actor Tiffany Haddish was arrested early Friday in Peachtree City after she was reportedly spotted asleep behind the wheel. Police charged a 42-year-old She Ready comic with DUI and improper stopping on a roadway. According to an arrest report obtained by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, police suspected Haddish of being under the influence of marijuana. The incident began around 2.30 a.m. when someone reported a driver asleep at the wheel on Georgia 74, near Georgia 54, the report stated. Officers were dispatched to the area for a welfare check, but the vehicle was no longer there. Fayette County 911 dispatchers issued a be on the lookout alert for the 2021 Ford Explorer, in which Haddish was spotted, an officer saw the SUV as it pulled into the yard of a residence and conducted a traffic stop. Officer subsequently took Haddish into custody and she was booked into the Fayette County Jail in Fayetteville. According to TMZ, Haddish was released after she posted $1,666 around 6.30 a.m. Spokespeople for Haddish did not immediately respond to requests for comment, according to other media outlets. The Emmy and Grammy award-winning performer has hosted Saturday Night Live and has appeared in several films, including Girls Trip. According to media reports, Haddish was in Metro Atlanta filming Haunted Mansion, Disney's readaptation of a 2003 horror comedy that's set to be released later this year. You have a lot of people chiming in on the situation in support of Tiffany, like this person here who says getting a DUI doesn't always make you a bad person, just a person that made a bad decision. I got one most embarrassing situation of my life. Glad nobody got hurt was my biggest issue and I'll never do it again. Another person says, so what? It's a lot of people got locked up for doing that and over a million people is getting locked up now for the same thing. Men, women, and teens are going to jail right now doing what she did. And then this person here says, driving drunk is a huge deal when you have a loved one hurt by someone who was driving under the influence. And that's true, it's never a big deal to people until it comes knocking on your door. But in the case of Tiffany Haddish, this is a very grown woman. She's 42 years old, she knows better. She should not be having issues like this, getting arrested, driving under the influence, and she's always talking about she's ready, but she should have been ready to call that Uber black SUV. It's not like she doesn't have any money, like she can't call a driver. Many people are bringing up that she's going through things. Her breakup with the rapper Common was made public a couple of weeks ago. Also, her dog passed away and her grandmother passed away. She recently talked to Jason from Hollywood Unlocked about her bad upbringing with her mother and how her grandmother was the one who saved her. I was so busy focused on the negative stuff that happened. But what about the good things, Tiffany? What good did she do? And, and understand that. I had to have an understanding that she has a mental illness. It's a lot of things that were out of her control that she could not do, okay? Um, that she was not operating with all the tools necessary to raise five kids. Um, and I had to find forgiveness because I started thinking like, oh, when I have kids, do I want them to be treating me the way I'm treating her? Do I want them to at least look at what's good, at least, find something good. So I started focusing more on the good stuff uh, and started getting her the right foods, get her the best doctors, the best medications for her stuff. The she lost weight and got stuff. healthier too. Lost a bunch of weight. You know, everything, it was a journey and there are some really rough days, but I have my sister too. Me and my sister, we work together as a team to take care of our mom. You know, um, a lot of things I might, I just finance, and she does the groundwork, or I'll do some of the groundwork. I said, during my divorce, I accepted that that's 
she's never going to be that person. Once I accepted that, she's never going to be that mom again. She's never going to be what my idea of what I want my mom to be. She's never going to be that. So just enjoy what she is, what she does have to offer, what is good. And then kind of don't focus so much on the bad stuff. You know, um, that takes a lot of like, it's a lot. It's, it's a, lot, a lot, of lot of trying to ignore. So she be in there talking to herself and all that. I try to find the funny in that. <laughs> she in that full argument with herself and then start busting up laughing. And I'm like, what's the funny in this? Like, oh, she don't have to have friends. All her friends are in her head. <laughs> all her friends are always with her. She's never lonely. Mm-hmm. You know, she's never lonely. That, that's one thing I could say. My mama ain't never lonely. But when I got her that dog. And my mom hadn't been taking, hadn't taken care of anything since we was kids, since we got removed from her, right? And my sister said, Tip, okay, because, and I got the dog from my mom because I was out of town and my sister was watching my dogs. And she goes, Tiffany, I've never seen, mama's not talking to herself. She's like having fun with the animals. She loves your cat. She loves the dogs. Like she's like walking them and cleaning them and taking care of them. And she, she's like, I've never seen her smile this much in my entire life. She's smiling all the time. She's like, nice. She's not being mean. And I was like, what? What? So then I was like, I need my animals back. You can't have my animals, but I'll get you an animal. So I got her the dog. Pretty dog, by the way. Beautiful dog. When I tell you, she was lit up. I hadn't seen her like that since I was seven. Mm -hmm. So there was a glimpse of the mom that I used to have. She's like, oh, this is for me. Oh, she was just so happy hugging me. She be sleeping in the bed with the dog. She be come, try, talking about she need outfits for the dog. She want to watch. She washing the dog every other day. She walking. The dog. She's so happy with this dog. And I'm like, OK. And she keep on asking when it, when some of us are going to have some kids. Now, my sister had a daughter. My youngest sister had a baby girl. Uh, but my sister's like, mama can't keep my baby. <laughs> she ain't going to be watching my baby. Exactly. Your sister is a smart woman. And as far as the whole dog thing, a lot of the modern women today who can't get along with the man, you're going to have to get a dog too. A lot of people are like Tiffany. She feels obligated to take better care of her mother than her mother was able to do for her. Her mom used to put paws on her all the time out of frustration. Tiffany says it was because of mental illness and brain damage, but her mom was very mean to her and she was raising five kids that she couldn't take care of. When Tiffany was about 12 years old, all five of them got removed from her mother. Two brothers went one place, two sisters went another place. Tiffany was in foster care alone. And then it was her grandmother who came and saved all of them. She picked up all five kids, got custody of them, and she raised them. Um, now, my grandma, that's my heart. That's my, she my everything. And um, when I got that call yesterday, it was really, it was very um, difficult for me. And it's something that I've been going through for, I mean, since my success, since the takeoff, right? Um, and all my money, a lot of my money goes to making sure she is good and my mama's good. You know, I redid her whole because my I'm just trying to do everything she says she wanted as I was growing up, right? And um, I pray a lot, and I know that she lived a full life, and she did everything, everything she was supposed to do to the best of her ability. She put a lot in me. She taught me how to love. She taught me how to take care of myself. She was mean sometimes, and she was very affectionate. She was a grandma. She was a, a black grandma. grandma. A black grandma. She didn't play. Very heavy handed. <laughs> Um, and she, you talk mess, and she gonna slap the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. And I, I would do anything just to cuss in front of her and her slap the shit out of me. <laughs> right? Um, she's my heart. That's my queen, though. Mm-hmm. She's my queen. She's my everything. She, she loved where, where my mother could not love me and do, she did. Mm. You know? Uh-huh. But I know, like, that's, sometimes I feel like she's my soulmate. Mm-hmm. Right? That's my soulmate. That's my... She was my first best friend, you know, like my mama, I love, that's the first person I ever loved, but my grandmama, that's my, she rescued me, mm-hmm. but nobody was trying to say she rescued me. I understand 100% why Tiffany feels the way she feels about her grandmother, but it is kind of odd. I've never heard of a woman describing her maternal figure as a soulmate and any woman wired that way to think of their grandmother 
or their mother as a soulmate, I don't see how they're going to be able to pair bond with a man. And that, along with all the generational curses and the things that's passed down, all of that contributes to Tiffany's inability to get along with a man. And a lot of people like Tiffany, they may have good hearts, they may be genuine, they make really good friends or really good employees, but that doesn't automatically make it easy to deal with them on a relationship level as a girlfriend or a wife. Like, yeah, they can get along with women. Women love them. But what about getting along with a man? And as a woman, women liking you doesn't really matter unless you plan to be in a relationship with a woman. Condolences to Tiffany for everything that she's going through. She should definitely get help if she's needing it right now. You have the resources to do it. As a 42-year-old grown woman, you have to be responsible, make good decisions. Don't get out there driving under the influence. You can get in your car and do that and the next thing you know, boom, there goes the life of another person or other people that may also have people who love them just as much as you love your grandmother. So it's very important to be responsible and think of all of that. That goes for everybody. Gonna go ahead and wrap it up right here. Let me know what you think about all of this below in the comments. I want to send a special shout out to Smoke Jensen. Thank you so much for your support for this channel. Also, special shout out to Dark Power. Brother, I appreciate you as well. Want to see more content like this? You can support the channel too. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis, want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.